it's time for another mini painting video featuring army painter speed paints and minis from the board game Oathsworn into the deep wood. I've really enjoyed painting these models as they are larger and more detailed than my previous minis and those details really shine with the easy beautiful color of speed paints. These models and speed paints changed my minis from cringe worthy to table ready. In today's video we will talk about the importance of models and get another Oathsworn mini ready. Let's get to it after this. Here's a mini from a fantastic board game called My Father's Work. Look for a review on my channel in the future. The game is great, and I love that it came with minis for all four players, but the first problem here is that they are definitely on the small side. And because the models are small, it's more difficult to pick out and differentiate the details when painting. You can see how muddy this painted version looks, and while some of that is definitely my skill level, a good part of it comes from the quality of the model. Now let's take a look at how small it looks when placed next to one of my O-Sworn minis. What a difference a few millimeters or inches or whatever it is makes here, huh? You can see why it's so much easier to paint the O-Sworn minis versus these My Father's Work minis. In today's video, we'll be painting the Penitent class, primed and dry brushed. Before we get to that, here's a look at the Ursus Warbear with just the black priming and the zenithal gray. I haven't yet got to the dry brushing step with him. Look for a video where I paint this monster in the future. The penitent, however, is a step further with dry brushing already complete. Though honestly, I think of it more as not so dry brushing as I lay it on pretty heavy. I find that helps bring out the most in the speed paint colors. Looking at the penitent, he's got a big shield, lots of metal armor that might make the paint both boring and easy, and a nasty looking ball and chain weapon. I'm starting things off here with one of my favorite paints in the speed painting arsenal, Broadsword Silver. Broadsword Silver is one of the metallics that came with my speed paint 2.0 mega set. Now the metallics don't have the exact same properties as other speed paints, as they aren't quite as good at creating shadows and depth, but I'm definitely happy with how quickly and efficiently I can get them on this model. There's an awful lot of armor to paint on this guy, so you'll see a lot of broadsword silver in the early going here. Now, as I move over to his other leg here, I want to point out another super simple technique I learned that has been invaluable to me. And that's how I anchor my hands when painting. Now I'm well aware that more experienced painters can control their brush strokes easily in midair, but for me getting my hands on a solid surface really helps with the control. It allows me to carefully get the edges and details and feel confident while doing it. And now we're using more broadsword silver on the ball and chain weapon. This is one of the easiest areas to paint on the model as it's completely separate from the rest of the figure. So I can pretty easily get it painted up quickly and efficiently. And thanks to speed paints the coverage is great with one good coat. A few other parts here to touch up with a little bit more broadsword silver before we move on to another color. And now we're moving on to the next color, Murder Scene. We're using it to paint some cloth details that are just above where the armor meets the midsection of this particular figure. Now Murder Scene is a dark, rich hue somewhere between red and purple. I've used it on other models in the past and really like it. We're using it for some of those cloth details that I already mentioned and we'll use it to paint this whole cloth area over his abdomen. It's been all gray or silver up until this point, so it's great to start to get some real color on the penitent. On the back here, the penitent has a sort of furry sort of detailed area just above where his cloak is. We're going to stick with that same murder scene paint in this area for right now. I intend to use other bright red hues on the model as we continue onward. Before we do that though, I found one more area I want to use this beautiful murder scene color. He's got a sort of a plume coming out the back of his helmet, horsehair flowing behind him and I think it looks great with this color. Now we finally move on to the bright red I talked about earlier. In this case we're using blood red. Yes, we went from murder scene to blood red. Grizzly stuff. 
A big area like this cloak can be hit or miss with speed paints. Large flat areas aren't the best to get the most out of them, so you have to take care when using it in this situation. If you let it get too heavy, it can easily pool in all the wrong places. And here you can see me take advantage of that anchoring technique again to get the sides and edges of the cloak and fill everything in. Look how that murder scene color has changed as it dried. I think you can better see now what I meant when I said that it straddles a line between dark red and purple. At this point, I'm carefully trying to get some of the paint on the underside of the cloak. Now this part of the cloak isn't easily apparent, but I find that if I don't try to get some of the color on these areas, it sticks out to me at the very least. Now we move on to a whole new area and a whole new color. Now technically, I could have just kept going with Broadsword Silver for this helmet and other armor areas as well, but I wanted some more variants. I decided using gold for some of the top armor areas might look nice. This color is a brand new one that I got off Amazon called Glittering Loot, and it looks just as the name implies. In fact, as I apply it, I wonder if it's too gold and shiny for what I was after. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you can almost always go back and make corrections. The penitent also has some details in his chest area that I thought would be a good usage for this gold color and I'm hitting those now. He has some sort of symbol or decoration in the very center of his chest plate and he also has these bands or tassels that hang down over towards his midsection. And here we go with the speed paint color I use on almost every mini at this point, hardened leather. It's a great application here for this belt around his waist. But this color can be used in a lot of applications, especially if you're painting fantasy minis like we are right now. Remember how I said you can usually go back and make corrections? Well, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going over that too bright glittering loot color with the old trusty hoplite gold, which is a more muted, darker hue. And now we're moving on to the coup de grace of this model, the big shield the penitent carries. I'm going to be using the same colors I used on the cloak area, starting out with blood red for the initial sectors of the shield. I've saved the shield until now because I was honestly a little intimidated by it. I'll have to paint more carefully here to get the results I'm after. You'll see me do a lot of anchoring here, as well as shifting the model around quite a bit to find the best approach angle for each area of that shield. Right now it's looking a tiny bit sloppy, but hopefully that will improve as we continue. And now after those blood red parts are done, we're going to move on to murder scene like we used before. That purple red sort of hybrid that I like so much. In this case, I'm filling out the bands with this murder scene color and hope that they will blend together well on this shield. Again, you can see I'm a little bit sloppy here. Honestly, I may have been better off moving to a smaller detail brush here, but I stuck with the bigger brush that I was using already. What can I say? I make mistakes. At this point, I'm moving on to the sword detail on the front of the shield and going back to our old buddy Broadsword Silver for it. This is again very detailed work. I might have been better off switching to a smaller brush and you can see that I'm creating a bit of a mess here, but I'm also pretty confident that I'll be able to clean it up a little bit later. And like I've said before, I'm more looking for table ready miniatures. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not a professional. I'm not looking to win any contests. And hey, is the shield wielded by this penitent guy going to be in perfect condition? I think not. Now we'll give that shield a little time to dry and see if that improves its overall look. And while we do that, we'll move on to one of my favorite new techniques, the wash. I still feel like the gold armor is a little too bright for a melee fighter like the penitent, so I'm going to try to dirty it up a bit with a dark wash. Washes are fairly similar to speed paint when it comes to their viscosity. The difference is they are even more watery and really flow into all the cracks and crevices. I'm going to use this quite a bit on the model to darken and dirty it all up a bit. You can already see how it has affected the look of the armor on his shoulder and his helmet. Much dingier and more muted, just how I wanted it. 
Now I'm going to continue to apply this wash to most of his torso area. The great thing about a wash is it doesn't really cover up your colors. It just sort of dips them in shadow. I'm continuing here to apply it to his lower area now, get his legs and the other stuff that I painted way earlier on. The good thing about the wash is you can really just sort of slop it on, kind of similar to speed paint like I said. Just get it on there and it'll do its magic. And finally I'll just do some touching up on the washes. It's a little too dark in areas I need to clean it up. And there you have it, we're just about done. Not too bad. Here's a look at the finished model after drying and doing some basing work. I think even the shield looks pretty good. Sure, it's not perfect. I mean, there's some bleeding around all the edges, but to me, it just looks like a battle-worn shield, and I'm happy with that. What can I say? Speed paints have done it again. I love the way they make painting easy for me, and as my technique improves, so do the results. Now, speed paints aren't the end-all be-all. I'm sure as I continue my painting journey and my ability grows, I'll expand into more acrylic and other work. But for the table-ready models I'm after, speed paint has been a godsend. If you want to try it out, I recommend the Speed Paint 2.0 Starter Set to begin your journey. Gives you a great selection of colors to start out with, including that broadsword silver we used all over this model. If you like this video, like, subscribe, do all that jazz, and look for more mini painting and other videos from me in the future. Thanks for watching.